this whole Lamar Jackson situation with the Baltimore Ravens has been going on for a long time, uh, really with no clear end in sight. Uh, and of course, with Jalen Hurts being paid, that's brought up even more conversations about the contract that Lamar Jackson was offered, well, the contract that we know about that he was offered, one of the contracts. Uh, and it was some good money, especially when you compare it side by side with the Jalen Hurts deal. Uh, the Ravens, they were setting Lamar Jackson up nice, but apparently he wanted more. Apparently he wanted better. But when you really, really think about this whole thing, you really take a step back. It seems like it's a lot deeper than just money. And we're going to discuss exactly why. But first, let's hear a word from our sponsor. It's April, so it's a new month. But even with it being a new month, there are two things that will always remain the same, for me at least. I will never have a problem with paying for convenience or quality. And this is why Fact is so great, because they give me both. Too busy to cook this spring? I know, we all are. The fact that you can skip the trip to the grocery store and skip the prepping, the chopping, and the cleaning up too. Because who wants to do all that? Fact is fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat it up and enjoy. Then get back to outside and enjoying that warm weather. And if you want to cut back on takeout, get Factor instead. Not only are Factor meals cheaper than takeout, but the meals are ready a lot faster than any restaurant delivery time will ever be. Let me show you. get much easier than that and what makes it even easier with fact is that they're so flexible so you can easily adjust the size of your order enjoy the meals with your loved ones but if you have something going on like a special event you can skip a week and then just pick up where you left off and on top of all of that it tastes good i know by now you're ready to put your order in so let me go ahead and tell you where to go you can head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code engraven50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Let me tell you again, because I know it sounded too good to be true. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code engraven 50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Enjoy. Ain't no jazz what I made. You too, T, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving? Right engraving. YouTube, team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and before we get into this video i also got to give a special shout out to the newest team keep it clean patron uh my guy the big fella uh, so appreciate you becoming a team keep it clean patron if any of y'all would like to become a patron as well you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids and if you don't want to that's fine just subscribe to the channel uh, leave a like on the video and hopefully you enjoy uh, everything that you see on here um but somebody who apparently has been not been enjoying everything that they've seen uh, is Lamar Jackson because he hasn't quite enjoyed every single contract offer that the Ravens have entertained him with. That's why there hasn't been anything signed. But um, like we mentioned earlier, I think this this goes far beyond money. Uh, I was talking to my guy CD the other day, and he brought up a, a really, really good point uh, that really, when you think about it, really aligns with everything that Mike Lombardi was saying that Lamar Jackson wanted. Uh, and let's read it. He said, what if Lamar Jackson planned this perfectly? And he told the Ravens, give me $250 million fully guaranteed, because uh, we've been hearing the rumors that he wants more guaranteed money than Deshaun Watson. So whether it's $250 fully guaranteed or $231 fully guaranteed or $232, whatever it may be. What if he told the Ravens, give me more fully guaranteed than Deshaun Watson or get both DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham Jr. and I'll take a normal deal. Because that, that, that's where the kicker was right there. Because I know with Mike Lombardi, he said that Lamar Jackson told them, hey, get me DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham Jr. and we'll talk. But my guy CD, he, he took it a step further. And when I thought about it, I was like, wow, that would make a lot of sense. And he said uh, it'll enforce them to give him uh, more help. And I was like, oh, that's a really, really good thought. Um, because with that, th this could show, like, obviously, uh, everybody been saying, oh, the Deshaun Watson deal, it's an outlier. It's an anomaly. It's not the norm. Um, and Lamar Jackson and his camp, they, they could know that. They could know that. They could be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, that, that's, that's an off-the-wall deal. But you know what? For the Ravens, Ravens, all right, you want to talk? You want me to stay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take back some control now. I, I'm, I'm going to use some of the power that I have now. If you really want me to stay, hey, we, we could talk, but th this is what I need you to do for me. These are the demands I need you to meet. 
Uh, if you want to really talk, go out and show me. Prove to me that you truly value me. Not just, not just with money. Not just with money. Because, again, with the deal that the Ravens apparently offered him, it was not a bad deal by any means. It wasn't a bad deal. And even if they sweeten the pot a little bit, add a couple more millions to it, like to, to, to top the Jalen Hurts deal, then okay, that, that, that'd be a nice deal. But maybe Lamar Jackson's like, ah, no, I, I need something even more valuable than that. Because, again, it's not just about the money. We've talked about on here for years how we don't feel like the Ravens valued Lamar like that. We don't feel like they fully trusted him. Uh, all the way. We don't feel like they have fully believed in him all the way. We've been saying that for a long time on here. Um, just because of the way that they've constructed their teams, uh, more so on offense, especially at the wide receiver position, but even with the, the offenses, the, the, the way that they construct them, the way that they build their offense, the way that they run their offense, it doesn't seem like they put their full trust in Lamar Jackson. And with all the questions that people will continue to have about Lamar Jackson. Of all the questions that the media will continue to put out there about Lamar Jackson, it almost seemed like the Ravens, they still had their questions about Lamar Jackson as well. Uh, obviously, one of the things uh, being Greg Roman and, and that offense, which early on, uh, it was great. It was phenomenal. Shout out to Greg Roman and shout out to how they just, they shocked the world. Um, but with Greg Roman, again, it's after two years, that's it. That's it. It, it maxes out, and, and that happens wherever Greg Roman goes. In the first two years, hey, it's great. Him as an introductory offensive coordinator to a young quarterback, oh, yeah, amazing. Perfect for that. Perfect for it. But after that, it fizzles out. And it just seemed like the Ravens, they, they, they moved on too late from Greg Roman. When do you ever hear, and, and like, correct me if I'm wrong because I just don't ever remember this, but when do you ever hear a starting quarterback – on an interview saying that defenses are calling out their plays. When do you ever hear that? And, and, and if, if that's not like one of the biggest indictments on your offensive coordinator, I really don't know what is. That, that, that seems like, it seemed like it back then, and it definitely still seems like it now. Like, that was almost like a public cry for help. Like, hey, Ravens, please, can y'all, like, do something about this? Please, I'm begging you. I'm telling Rich Eisen, hey, it seems like these guys are calling out our plays. And that's the thing, Lamar, he's, he's never been one to throw anybody under the bus. But that time, he, he threw Giro all the way under there. He's like, hey, like, hello. But with the Ravens, they, they just, they moved on from Greg Roman a little too late. A couple years too late, in my opinion. Um, my guy, Kev, when I was talking to him a few weeks ago, he brought up a really good point about why he feels that they actually retained Giro for so long. And he talked about continuity, uh, how the Ravens, they obviously value continuity. And maybe they were like, you know what, we just we, we want to keep the same offensive coordinator. We don't want to be rotating and flipping offensive coordinators because that's, that's not how we do things. And it really isn't how they do things for the most part with their coaching staff. But at the same time, you can be loyal to a fault. And that's what it seemed like the Ravens were. And then... Um, with personnel, with personnel, as far as uh, building an offense for Lamar Jackson, um, it's, it's been rough. It's been rough. They've taken some swings. Like with Hollywood, that one was working out, but Hollywood was like, no, nah, this offense, no, this, this ain't it. This ain't the one. And he had been asking for, to be traded for a couple of years, and the Ravens finally granted him his wish. Uh, with Rashad Bateman. He's, he's looked the part so far. I think he's going to be really good. Um, and then once he just continues to get more opportunities, he'll be even better. Um, but as far as when it comes to veteran wide receiver, because getting a young wide receiver is nice, and, and I, I love it. I, I love the Rashad Bateman pick. I love the Hollywood pick. I love it. And they've taken swings on other guys, too, in other rounds, like Miles Boykin, Devin Duvernay, James Prochet, Tylen Wallace. Um, but as far as the veterans... Like to, because it, it, it's good to get a nice mix of both, both young and not old, but both young and seasoned, both young and experienced as far as the wide receiver room. Because Mark Andrews, obviously, from him and Lamar Jackson's rookie year, uh, they clicked. 
they clicked and the sky was the limit from there. And we've seen Mark Andrews reach the sky, literally. Um, but as far as wide receiver, it's been, it's been tough there. Um, there's been guys like Willie Sneed, who was solid. He wasn't a bad wide receiver. He was solid. Uh, there's been Sammy Watkins. There's been Dez Bryans. There's been Deshaun Jackson, the, the mysterious Andy Isabella, uh, Seth Roberts. And it's obviously no offense to those guys, but if you're Lamar Jackson and you're looking around the league at your counterparts, you're looking at a Josh Allen. Wow, they got him. Stephon Diggs, what? You're looking at a Tua. Oh, man, they got him. Uh, Tyreek Hill. Oh, man, you're looking at Kyler Murray. Oh, man, they got him. DeAndre Hopkins, they got him. A.J. Green. And with all of those teams, and we could continue to name more, but with all of those teams, the way that they did it, they would get these nice receivers, established guys. But then they would draft a young guy, too. So they paired them really nice, but they would get top quality, high end wide receivers, not leftovers. Not leftovers. And with Lamar Jackson, he may be looking at the situation like, man, y'all just, I love, hey, I love the Ravens. I love the team, love the organization, love the fans, love all of that stuff. But the way that y'all have provided me with stuff, it just ain't been it. It ain't been it. And, and that's why it, it makes sense that this whole thing is probably deeper than money. So it, it, I, that would make the rumors that we heard make a lot more sense. Because if, if, like, I'm, try, try to put yourself in his situation. Like it's like, all right, if y'all are not, gonna give me who I need okay then you got to compensate me like crazy you got to compensate me like crazy and you may even think I'm crazy for wanting that compensation that type of compensation but it's either one or the other you're gonna give me this guaranteed money or you're gonna guarantee me getting some guys that's really like that and Again, it makes sense. It makes sense. Because it, it puts their, their feet to the fire, and it's, it puts some pressure on them. It does put some pressure on them. And it is, hey, it's a risk, too. It's obviously a risk from Lamar's side if this is what's happening. But in life, you got to take some risks, my friend. You got you to step out there. If you continue to let someone... Do you and not that the Ravens have done him nasty. Well, at wide receiver, it's been kind of nasty. But if you continue to allow somebody to do something that you don't like that they're doing, they're gonna keep doing it. They're gonna keep doing it. And if you don't stand up for yourself, if you don't speak up, they will continue to do the same thing that they've been doing. So this is why the the, the whole it just makes so much sense. You can Ravens stepping out there like they did for Odell Beckham Jr. Like what? What, what Ravens were those? Who, who is that? And yeah, Odell Beckham Jr., yeah, he's over 30 or whatnot. He had his injury issues and whatnot. And, I, and I've seen people pull up the list like, oh, well, it, it actually wasn't an overpay for Odell Beckham Jr. When you compare him to all the receivers making around the same amount of money that he makes. But for the Ravens, it was. For them, it was. I mean, even for somebody else. Because, again, he <laughs> wasn't nobody going to give him that. Not all that. They were saying that the, the Jets are offering him like five mil in guarantees. And then the rest will be incentives. <laughs> Ravens said, oh, five mil? Okay, we're going to do three times that. Literally three times that. That's not Raven-like at all. So that's why it being deeper than money, it just makes so much sense. Because it seems like Lamar could be really just trying to change the Ravens' philosophy. And that's something that we've clamored on here for years. Ravens need to change their philosophy. They need to get with the times. We talked about how I just, I don't feel like with the Ravens, even if, I, and, and I was scared. Going into this offseason, I was scared because I feel like it was <clears throat> not a lose-lose, but I feel like it was just scary territory because if the Ravens lost Lamar, wow, that would suck. <laughs> but if they retain Lamar but kept their same ways, we're never going to see Lamar Jackson hit his peak. We, we're never going to see him at his best. 
it's always going to be limited because of how you surround him and it, what you surround him with and the type of offense that they had, not just him in, but the whole offense that they ran. It's just so limited. It's limited. So now they, they, they've moved off from Greg Roman. They brought in Todd Munkin. And, you know, he got experience, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in the NFL already. He's had some successful passing offenses. Even got one of his former weapons that had a good year with him over there in Cleveland and in, in Odell Beckham Jr. We know what he did over there in, uh, in Tampa. And he, did, he, I mean, he had some good weapons over there. Yeah, Mike Evans. I mean, <laughs> yeah. But, and then he's coming off of success. He's coming off of success. Two straight national championships. And again, yeah, college is different from the pros. We get that. But, I mean, like, he, he was coaching for what, Georgia? So, I mean, there ain't nothing but NFL players on there anyway. Half of the NFL, they come from there. So, it, it's, it seems like the Ravens are sort of pivoting. They're not, they didn't hire a guy who just got fired. They didn't hire a guy who's on the tail end of his coaching career. They, they actually hired somebody while the guy was hot. While he was hot. A receiver coach they brought in from the Chiefs. Hello, the, the Chiefs just won a Super Bowl. They brought in somebody who was hot. Not somebody who was on the downside of that. No, this guy was hot. He just coached. MVS, Juju Smith-Schuster, McCole Hart, he just coached him to the Super Bowl. So, again, that's Ravens doing things that are much different. That, again, show that this whole thing could go far beyond money. Because it's deep. It's deep. And it just, it, it makes so much sense. So, I think this is really Lamar just taking control. Taking control and, and, and using his power using the power that he does have. Because, you know, obviously Ravens got a lot of power too. But Lamar using the power that he does have to really try to make a change within the Baltimore Ravens organization to show him like, hey, do you truly value me? Do you truly respect me? Do you truly want the best out of me? Because I want the best out of myself. And, hey, Lamar ain't been perfect now. So don't get it twisted. Lamar ain't been perfect. Obviously with, with the games that he's missed, that's big. Because your best availability Oh, your best ability is availability. So you got to be there. So they need that from Lamar. They, they need him to come through. Now, will, will the money change that? Like at the end of the season, like he's getting paid. Like, like okay, all right, I'm ready. I, I'm getting paid. I'm suiting up. We'll see. Well, hopefully we'll see. But um, so again, it, it, it's going to take compromise on both sides. But it seems like Lamar's compromise is, all right, hey, it, what it could be, what it, again, what it seems like it could be. Yeah, we, we, we could talk. Again, like, like Mike Lombardi said, give me DeAndre Hopkins and Odell Beckham Jr., and then we'll talk. And now with these, the, the, the rumors still surfacing about DeAndre Hopkins as a possibility for the Ravens, hey, do it. Ravens should do it. They should go all out or really all in. Put it all out there. Push all the chips in and go for it. They should have done this before, especially at that position. That, that, that's been the one position where, again, if, if you if you Lamar, it almost feel like a slap in the face. Think, like, really think about it. All right, we, we in the middle of the season. Rashad Bateman, um, he seemed like he got rushed back too early because he got rushed back in that, that Tampa game. He played a couple downs, and that was it. And then I, that was that was it for him for the year. Um, and who else did they have last year? But either way, receivers are struggling. Devin Duvernay, he got hurt a little bit. <clears throat> they bring in 35-year-old Deshaun Jackson. 35-year-old Deshaun Jackson. And not that he was bad, but, and I, and I know, like, slim pickings. Um, but it's like, really? That's, that's what you get? And then they bring, in, bring back Sammy Watkins. Going into the season, it was just Bateman. All right, cool. Demarcus Robinson. Like, oh, okay. But they should have went harder, man. They should have went a lot harder than they did at that position. Because so many other positions, it's like, oh, yeah. And I know some people are like, oh, you can't have everything. You can't. That's true. But you can do better. 
You can do better. You you can truly do better. So it's tough, man. But that's why when again when you compare the situations, Jalen Hurts and Lamar Jackson, it's different. It's different. Yes, Jalen Hurts is coming off the Super Bowl. Lamar Jackson has not sniffed the Super Bowl at all. And we know that. So Jalen Hurts riding that riding that wave, man. But again, Philly, they showed that, hey, Jalen Hurts is our guy. That's, that's our guy. That's who we want to be our quarterback. We are going to try to get the best out of him. So, again, the combination. Draft a young guy. Great. Devontae Smith. Bring in an established guy. A.J. Brown and, and you see Instant, immediate results right away. They haven't done that for Lamar like that. They really haven't. So I guess this could possibly be maybe Lamar just trying to get him one, one last chance. Like, hey, I want to stay here. I want to be here. I love, I love this team because we all feel like he does love the Ravens. You know he loves the Ravens. Of course he does. But it could be him giving them one last shot. Like, hey, look, this is what I need you to do. If you could do this, cool. If not, uh, might not be so cool. But just my opinion. So. We'll see how this whole thing works itself out. And hopefully it does work itself out. But I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for always listening. And, like, hopefully Lamar Jackson won't be. And hopefully, like, the Ravens won't be when it comes to being in the DeAndre Hopkins sweepstakes. We out. Exit out the door. Yeah. Use his favorite team with a bar.